one of them, one of the Austrians, is going to miss out on the World Cup. This time it's going to be Max Lechner. The team will be Mario He and Albin Auschen over in Spain. And of course, that's a tried and tested winning formula. Yeah, and that, that really, I don't think, has anything to do with, you know, the performance that Team Austria had last year. It's just the way rankings are and so on and so forth. And of course, two time champions with Mario He and Alvin Ocean representing Austria. You still have to feel sorry for Lechner, though. He'd oh, absolutely. Into most teams, wouldn't he? Absolutely, yeah. We talked about it to start this week that, you know, besides the late entry from David Alcady, every country only had one player besides Austria having three, which is super impressive in all off rankings. Now Spain, of course, had two players. We lost one earlier. And a big one it was. And this is the kind of start you mail in for. And he really got on with it as well, so you have to like the mentality. And it's one of those tournaments where you could see any of the 16 original entries lifting the trophy at the end of it. And after what we've seen, perhaps more importantly, cashing the jack. Our golden break cross side. And I was just going to bring up, you know, I, I mentioned earlier that Shane Van Boney wants to win the lag, right? How important is it? Well, I'll tell you what, after seeing the prize money graphic, then Mario He was on the money. The eighth golden break of the tournament, in it goes to the side pocket. This has been perfection so far from the Austrian. He leads by three racks to zero. Kazakis, non-involvement so far. The run is punctuated. The one found the side pocket, but the Start cue the ball place. thwarted him. Yeah, a little nick off the brown seven. And boy, Kazakis can take a, a little deep breath of fresh air there. A little ball in hand. Probably just uh, was in the, in the stars a little bit for Kazakis in that final. And also, he just made sure he was doing everything perfect. A little flat here. He's got to put a little speed into this to come down table for the six, the green six on the right side. Uh-oh, watch out, side pocket. And anytime you get flat, that's the problem when you have to get into the ball a little bit. Doesn't take much to miss your mark with the cue ball. Can't quite tell how thin this is. I think he can just ease this in. He may go three rails around in between the eight and nine. Oh, that kind of hooked a little bit. Not saying it won't get there, but probably not quite as convincing as he would have liked. like he'll just cheat the pocket a little bit. Come up the side rail for the nine in the opposite corner. Oh, he drew straight back. Interesting. at it. He's going to serve up a nine ball. In the scheme of things, Jeremy, this should be pretty straightforward. Yeah, absolutely, Phil. Uh, extension the key to the, this is just stay in the middle with the speed. Not too, not too hard, not too soft. That medium speed kind of opens yeah. the pocket up a bit. Four nil. It 
was all one way. Yeah, see the two there going towards that corner. I think he could have played that two ball maybe a little easier than the one. And I think, Jeremy, there's enough of the one ball just poking its nose out to go. I think a little favorite here. Oh, sure. oh, he, he's really amped up. Oh, of has. course, he was close to the seven, but that cue ball got way up in the air. Start the clock, please. Onto the cushion rail, into the pocket with the white. And what a bonus this has turned out to be for Alexander Kazakis, who, when he missed the one and left it hanging, must have feared the worst. Really affect your speed control. Putting a heavy stroke into this. Yeah, beautiful effort. Had to apply lots of side to swing it past the potential problem ball, the Brown 7. That was avoided, and now 5-4 might well be on the cards. Yeah, he's perfect to come to the center of the table here, getting the ideal angle on the 6. Of course, what I saw is the real work in the rack from the 7 to the 8. And I think the 7 it looks like it's froze to the side cushion, so... Maybe it's a hair off, that would help. The only reason I say that, oh yeah, it is off. Uh, anytime you have to come backwards with the cue ball, with an object ball that's froze to the cushion, very difficult. Oh my, oh my, ooh. Reminded me a little bit of the Ruiz shot earlier today that caught the point. Now Kazaka's in a great spot. little jerky but the eight ball went in without alarm this is resilient and a resolute I think he's gonna play the combo with a little high ball now it depends on how much cut there is uh, I don't know if the Four is going to move much here. High ball, he may not get shape. Oh, he stunned it. And he's missed it. Huge error at a big moment. And it's another rack where Kazakis comes back to the table, counting his lucky stars. Yeah, and, uh, you know. To be fair, a little deja vu uh, for Mario. He, in my mind, anyways, uh, a match that looks like, you know, unfortunate scratch on the break in the fifth game. But he's had two opportunities since, after huge mistakes from Alex, to get that extended lead. And we're going to be tied here shortly. For all intents and purposes, he should be in front. That's Mario here, of course. As it is, Alexander Kazakis has fought his way back onto level terms. He's at 5 5, even though. In many respects, he's been struggling, and that was. A shot that will fill 
Mario He's heart with gladness. Okay, something he really badly needed. Yeah, well, if Mario He had kept up the pace that he started with, even with Alex coming to the table, this could be about 7-3, maybe even 8-3 match right now. Yes, when he won in 2021, Kazakisi beat Justin Sage 7-3, then Skylar Woodward. Nothing to write home about. His match against Eklund Kachi in the semi-final was error-strewn and disjointed in the extreme. He was really annoyed with the way he played. Kelly Fisher, who was there playing in the tournament, gave him a, a pep talk before the final, and obviously he was a, a very different proposition with the title on the line. So you don't have to play your best all the time to win. Oh, absolutely. We've seen that here already. Legner and Zelensky didn't play their best pool, got the victory. Alvin Ocean and Kachi played a really fine match, and you, you hate to see either one of them go, and Alvin had to exit the event. Just how nine-volt pool is, and always will be, by the way. So he may have to take this on whether he plays safe on the seven or not. Oh my, look at how deep these side pockets are. Wow. No balls in front of the white, but Kazakis is snookered. Nevertheless, look at this. And sometimes they'll save you, Phil. Station code. Wow, uh, look at this. He's going to jump the point. Wow. Well, this is uh, pretty difficult. Normally, if there's enough space that you can't really get on the on the cue ball how you want. Look at him darting it. See the hand position of the right hand. Wow. He got unlucky. He landed on the rail. In hand. Well, he missed the point at least. Start yeah, he got over place. the point, then landed on the rail right before the five. Really nice effort. Just a difficult situation. And when do you think the last time he practiced that one was, Phil? Just what I was thinking. You probably <laughs> never even envisaged the shot coming up in any match, let alone at the Whirlpool Masters, with so much on the line. cue ball it needs a kiss and it got it it was going to get lost in that upper right hand corner he is snookered on the blue too but a lot better than surrendering ball in hand and to a much lesser extent the nine was moving around there yeah and I'm you know, I think overall we're just seeing something that's going to happen every every blue moon, right? But we've already had this break rule in place for many tournaments, and we've seen some golden breaks, but we actually have seen, like we talked about earlier, more scratches uh, when the cue ball goes back into the nine than uh, quite the opposite, the nine falling in either the corner or the side. He must like a kick shot here. And this is a funny situation. Up eight to five. I don't know if I take on the kick here versus the push. Now he's he hit it beautifully. Can't hit it any better. Everything about it got the blue two in a very protected position and a big bonus with the cue ball behind the brown seven. The heat's on Kazakas. And that was fairly by design, the entire part of it, uh, every part of it, excuse me. Now, if he can hit this, he's got a lot of good things that can happen. This doesn't appear to be one of them. Not inconceivable. That could be his last shot of the tournament. Yeah, and it should be, you know, the form that Mario showed most of this match and what we're used to seeing from him. 
He's got to make a little bit of a delicate shot coming between the purple five and six here, but shouldn't be too, too much of a problem. Okay, he's gotten a little straight, so he's going to have to take a, a bit of a shot on the pink four to the lower right corner. Don't really see him trying to move the cue ball a whole lot here. Now the problem is, is he going to be a little awkwardly stretched trying to shoot that shot? He may try to draw this ball into the six, maybe. Is that what he's looking at? And he tied the six up, so... There could be a kiss shot on the nine coming off the green six. But now the good thing is the five's near. Even though he is at the purple, excuse me, the pink four right now. say he could easily get a breakout angle off the purple five into the green six and I, I don't know if I would play the combo here or the kiss shot he does have a cross corner bank that's a possibility but he's perfect to go right into the green six here I wonder if he even notices that now he does but he's taking a lot of time so and the position of the six is the last vestige of hope, you would think, for Kazakis. And now that hope might well have been extinguished. Now he's got to play still a, a little nifty shot here. Odds are we're going to lose another former champion. He's got options here. He can come two Excursion rails kind of softly behind the eight for the seven, the brown seven in the upper left. He can kind of pull the ball a little bit and come underneath the seven off of a couple cushions with maybe a little low right. I think that's the route he's going, just all speed control. Yeah, that's the shot I initially saw. He made that look much easier than it actually was. There's no doubt in my mind whatsoever he has been the superior player in the match, but that said, in the last few racks, things have gone very much in his favor. I think it's a deserved victory, no doubt. But in mid-match, at times he was toiling. This is just the ideal start, this, for David. It always settles you down. Yeah, 
Yeah, clean opening. David O'Kady. No time at all. Leads 1 0. This is nice. That was not easy from David there. A little stun shot in behind the purple. Well done. Shane Van Boning by a few years, the younger of the two. He'll be 40 this summer. Don't really think we can even find the need to ask the question as to whether he's lived up to his potential in the game. a long time to be world champion finally did that last year a record equaling five US Open titles and simply one of the greatest there's ever been he's a good hit needs two to slow down no he didn't this is Alcady's third attempt to win a match in the World Masters for the first time since that 2019 victory like so many things, the tournament didn't happen in 2020, in the COVID year. And he did finally get to defend the title, lost his first match to Skylar Woodward, and also went out in his first match last year against Copenhagen. That was a good positional effort there from David. Playing the green six up into the top left. Cue ball's going to run into the nine. He's tried to force it through. He's not fluked the nine, has Oh, he? wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, wow, a minute. what a way to go 2-0 in front. Well, the things you see on a pool table just never ceases to amaze you, does it? That was unbelievable. He's missed the six by a mile. Look at this one. Well, as we saw there, no one does a look of disgust quite like Shane Van Boning. And I think he's entitled to it there. That was extraordinary fortune for al -Kady. Missed it by quite a way. And six comes back this end. Thumps into the nine. And the most unintentional combo makes it 2-0. Tells you all you need to know, but how many times has SVB done this to an opponent? Well, where's the cue ball going? Where is the cue ball going? Oh, what an error this is! Oh, what yeah. a turning point this is! And what a waste, really! Looked like 3 0 all that. over. This just didn't need to happen. Look at the little flick on the nine ball just to find that little oh, gap. Sure. Wow. So Shane Van Bongling's first break of the tournament was a scratch. Mm -hmm. Extension called. And barring something extraordinary here, that's going to be his only visit to the table in this fourth rack. Oh, and we've seen something extraordinary. What happened there, Carl? Well, you know, you, when you said it, Michael, I thought, well, he's not quite come far enough round for this nine. They expect him to miss it, but that was a lot thinner than the camera angle told us. And two big glaring errors there from Al KD. Using the five as a holder, he's missed the pot. By some distance as well. He's gone through the full range of emotions and facial expressions already in this match. And that one was...
was somewhere between concern, confusion. Well, what's going on here, Carl? Yeah, I promise you, people watching, they have actually won this tournament two times each. We're not joking. But it becomes contagious, doesn't it, when one player starts missing unexpected balls, it can put doubt in the other one's head. Yeah, and because obviously it's not like one person's done it and the other one's playing great, mm. what's happening here is they're both struggling with the back arm, aren't they? So these guys are used to tournaments where they're playing match after match after match and you're straight into the action and you stay in it for as long as you're in the tournament. Whereas in this format, where it's just one table, they've both been waiting around for quite a while to play, been here a few days already. I know arcade has been in the arena watching a lot of matches and it gives it all time to build up the importance of it all in their heads and perhaps that's a factor. Yeah, and the fact that they've played a lot of matches against each other, not just in this tournament but in other tournaments even in Moscone Cup matches they've played each other so there's obviously the respect is there and obviously David wasn't in the event Shane was supposed to play Fedor then he was supposed to play Don Kwok Hong from Vietnam and then he's faced with a two-time champion the arcade so it's all been a bit bizarre for the players yeah issues to do with travel and visa prompting all the chopping and changing it did leave us with a match that we thought was going to be an absolute classic from the start. Not how it's going at the moment, but it's fascinating to watch. Mistakes are plenty on both sides. Well, that's not SVB's greatest highlight real shot, is it? No, that makes you look very foolish, that doesn't it? Straight in the pocket. That is unreal. It's like he just can't get his head clear and is thinking straight. I mean, what was that shot? Just trying to hit it a bit thinner before the middle and just get the distance, get the four ball on the back rail. But so far away from doing that. He's left it pretty much straight, anywhere but straight. The only ball you ever want to be straight on is the nine ball. Now he's got a bit of work to do here. Yeah, is it that good though? That is a very, very good shot to get the cue ball there. Maybe that will just wake David up a little bit. Couldn't put the cue ball any better. Shane Van Boning still has not led in this match. David O'Cady hits the front once more at 4-3. Right. I think it's already felt like one of the biggest titles in the game, right up there with the World Championship and the US Open. But the fact that the match distances are now comparable to those events only enhances that sense and whoever's lifting the trophy on saturday night will probably be the most hard won world masters title there's ever been
slightly bigger bounce would have been ideal, but he's still okay. Play this into the rail. Yeah, there you see, that's the way he's played it. He knows the pocket will swallow the ball up. Just starting to see. So it's the bank shot. Oh, beautiful. Look at the cue ball. What a shot he's played there. What a shot he's played there. That's the shot of the match so far for SVB. Yeah, without a doubt. And he had the break and run in the last rack. Now he's pulled out this shot here. Absolute perfection. And moments like that are what you need to shake you out of the sort of rut that SVB found himself in for so much of this match. Catch you. There was another player who seemed to be breaking at their maximum pace. Mario. Mm. And I think there's two ways of breaking. It's full speed as, you know, as hard as you can hit them, but it's a little bit softer and draw the cue ball more. I think the power break I think in the long run, I, I just believe that is, you're going to get more from it. And a lot of the pool fans around the world, the rate chainers, the best breaker pool's ever seen. And I think when he's breaking at full pelt, <laughs> You wouldn't go far on copying him. And when his breaking's been at its best over the last couple of years, I certainly would have observed that it's not there right from the start. It's a few matches in that he starts to produce his very best breaking. So if he can get through this match, as looks increasingly likely, the best may very much be still to come in that department. When O'Kady led 5-3, we were talking about the prospect of him establishing some daylight and that perhaps freeing him up to play his best stuff. Well, it's gone entirely the other way, and since then, it's going to be four in a row for the American. Yeah, he had to play that ball hard because he didn't leave himself enough angle to just stun the ball in and let the cue ball naturally flow over. He was a little bit straight. Well, this is so much more like it from Van Boning. Can Alcady do anything to turn it round? Will he get it? Just because of where the nine ball is, anything long could cause issues. So much so he's under it, this. I don't know if we can roll this in and hold for the nine. He was so scared of landing on that back rail and hooking himself behind the nine. He's under it, this. So this is a big shot if he's got to get the cue ball up and down for this nine. I think nine chain. He may just try and roll it in and leave another thin nine ball. Now he's going up and down. Oh, he's done well. Another good shot, this. Them shots, they're so underrated, they really are. They're not easy to pop the ball and find that line up and back down. This one still needs potting. Should be okay. Now, that was a little bit of a tester, but he's passing all the tests at the moment. That's now five on the bounce and three break and runs in the last four racks for Shane Van Boning. He's taken a firm command of this, still shaking his head, but no reason to. Well, Michael, it was all about the start for me. David Alcady, it was 2-2 within the first four racks. It could well have been... Uh, certainly 3-1, obviously mm. he fluked the nine ball, didn't he? But he made a couple of glaring errors. He missed the nine ball and he scratched in the side after flicking, I think it was the nine again in one of the racks. Yeah, it was the nine, yeah. And 
It was so eventful early on. You're saying 3-1, and absolutely it could have been, but wouldn't have taken much to happen differently for him to have won all of those racks, and may very well have been a different night. But to Skylar Woodward in 2021 and Ko Pin Yi in 22, it looks as though we're going to add the name of Shane Van Boning to complete that hat-trick of opening match defeats for David Alcady in the World Masters, a tournament that's been such a big part of his career. He'd won it two out of the three previous stagings prior to that. He was leading 5-3 in this match. But it looks as though he's going to bow out, having won only one further rack. And what it all means is that of the five players who retained the Moscone Cup for Europe just before Christmas, all five have gone out in the first round here. And the final part of that has been applied by the only member of the US team they defeated who's in the field for the World Masters.